building on our discussion yesterday about being a better leader, we want to look at specifically at the importance of the inner game of conscious leadership. Now, the inner game is about our own mind, our thoughts, our experience, our ego, conditioning, beliefs and, of course, values. And I'm delighted to say we're joined once again by Martin Palethorpe, who's a conscious leadership coach at beyondbounded.com and the co-founder of consciousleaders.earth. Martin, welcome back to Cybos TV. It's good to see you once again in our screens in the studio. If I might start today by asking you what the link is between the inner game and conscious leadership. Good morning. So I, I think you, you started off uh, describing it pretty well, really. So the inner, the inner game really is everything that is going on our, in our minds. Um, our, all of our thoughts are coming together in the form of deep-rooted beliefs and values and opinions. Um, so we've got the, the deeper subconscious thoughts going on, and then we've got what's in our conscious mind. Um, we've also got influences like uh, people will call, talk about the ego, so the ego is there to protect us and have us feel safe and look good and to defend ourselves. Um, so, of course, everything that's going on in our minds impacts how we feel, but it also impacts how we see the world right now. So how we see the world right now, we could see it as amazing opportunity. We can also see it as significant crisis and, and lots of fear going on. So how we feel, how we see the world then impacts all the choices and the decisions that we're making and the actions that we take. If we look at what's going on right now in the markets, how we deal with that, the choices we make, the actions are, are absolutely fundamental. And this shapes the consciousness of our leadership in, in all aspects. And so to being part of this, this interview today, as people are walking around this conference, really inviting them to look at their own thinking about um, and how that's showing up for them in their leadership. Mm. And, and given what you've said, Martin, are there examples where the inner game impacts us as leaders? Yes, th there's many. So... So take someone that's currently immersed in the belief that the world is really tough right now. It's a frightening place. Um, their thinking will, will override them. They will feel overwhelmed. They may even feel depressed with the, the stress of what's going on. And that will impact the, the, the inspiration that they have as a leader or, or not. Um, it'll impact the decisions and the actions, and the boldness with which they deal with the current situation. Um, let's take a, another example of someone perhaps that is walking around Cybos right now and has some thinking that, and some belief that they're not a confident person or they don't do, they don't do well in big groups. So the impl implication of that, the impact is that they'll shy away from certain situations on this very day at the conference. They may not network in the way that they would do if they didn't have that thinking. They may not build the, the strength of relationships that are absolutely critical for their, for their business and for their career. Um, so, so whatever stories they've got going on in their mind, that then impacts how they show up right now in, in every situation. And another practical example, many people have a, uh, a story that they don't have time, don't have time to look after themselves. And so when immersed in that, I don't exercise, I don't make time for myself, I, I end up feeling low energy, get more illness, don't make, um, don't use my mind with, with clarity. So how do we avoid this kind of thing, Martin? How do we action this on a personal level? How do we access our best inner game? So the best inner game, what, what is the best inner game? If we look at when we are at our best, um, sports people talk about this as being in flow or, or in the zone. We have this ability, if you take a look at a sports person taking a penalty or doing a, a drop kick or, or doing a backhand down the line in a tennis match, at, you know, in a five-setter in a final, there's this ability that they've got to be in the zone, mm -hmm. a hyper-aware state where we are relaxed and it's effortless, yet we access this incredible potential. And we've all, or we've all got this. We've all got this ability naturally, effortlessly, easily to access a flow state wherever we are in any moment, whatever we're doing. 
And, and the only thing that knocks us out of that is to what extent we're brought into the thinking that we're having in the moment. If I'm caught up in worry or, or stress, then what happens is I knock myself out of this natural ability to be amazing in any moment. So is there a level of inner game that we need to embark on this conscious leadership? Um, yeah, yes, well, there, there's two ways of looking at that. So flow and, and being in the zone, being your potential in any moment is a key aspect of this. But actually what we require right now is a shift in the level of consciousness. We need better thinking. We need thinking at this very conference and, and in the markets right now. We need a higher level of consciousness. We need to move from working for, from self-interest or from fear to working from trust, from collaboration, from working for the common good of, of the world. Um, and so, so there's a real shift. And I was interested in your previous speaker talking about listening, mm. learning, and leveraging. Yeah, absolutely. So listening with a truly open mind, not listening through the filter of my own beliefs, my own limiting thoughts, but listening with a real openness and, and leveraging Yes, leveraging for the good of all stakeholders, uh, including our organization, our people, but also including the markets, including society and the planet. So there's a real openness in shifting how we think that is really a, a more holistic, more responsible type of thinking that is so critical to conscious leadership. I was going to ask, Martin, what the implications of this are for the theme of Cybos this year, but listening, learning and leveraging seems like a, a good place to start, perhaps. Listening, uh, leveraging, uh, learning, leveraging, absolutely. Um, and, and when we look at some of the themes of, of Cybos, progressive finance for a changing world, progressive uh, and driving sustainability and ethics, if we just take those two, um, it's easy to feel overwhelmed right now in the turmoil, in the change, in the magnitude of the situation. The inner game is absolutely vital for the theme of Cybos because we, we cannot come from overwhelm. We have to come from calmness, a calm mind to access clarity in our thinking, clarity in our decisions. And, and just to repeat this, this point around um, level of consciousness, We've got to make wiser choices. Um, and what I'm talking about here is ind individual wise choices in the way I live my life every moment, every day, but also choices that are intelligent for how I lead my department or, or my company or my organization in, in the world um, and, and what's required right now. Because we need innovative thinking that is bolder and braver and coming from a different plane. Mm. But it doesn't just happen overnight. So is there an ideal first step that anyone needs to take if they're really serious about this, making a difference to themselves and employing that in their business? Well, um, yeah, this is, a, this is a big area. And, and, and for, first step is how do we wake up from our thinking, um, from our own immersive thinking that we're wrapped up in? So... We are, we are wrapped it up in uh, our thinking, and our thinking has come a lot from what's happened to us over our lives and the views and the beliefs and the values that we've picked up along the way. But we have to be able to step back and assess where is our thinking coming from in the choices and the decisions and the actions that we are making. So th this is a this is a moment-by-moment uh, awareness that is required to help us um, make better choices. Um, a, a practical question also in the situation right now, especially when we're thinking about things like sustainability or ethics, is what impact do you want to have in this world? What, what impact do you want to have in your world? And what, what would you be proud of in terms of how you lead your organisation um, that, that you'd be proud of for, for five generations' time? How do we play a bigger game than the one that we might be automatically playing? 
OK, sadly, we're going to have to leave it there. But Martin Palethorpe, a conscious leadership coach at BeUnbounded.com and also the co-founder of ConsciousLeaders.of, thank you so much for joining us here on Cybos TV. Enjoy the rest of the day.